Hello stamping friends. This is Jenny from Celebrate the Journey and this is Wacky Wednesday. Apparently it is wacky. I'm having trouble getting my video to show. So we'll give it a second. And that'll give everybody time to get logged on too. So there we go. I think it's weird. There we go. That's working. It was um, going the wrong side. Um, hi, Jamie and Gay. It's nice to see you here tonight. So we'll chat for just a minute and then um, get started. Because I know that you're watching the Braves game, even though it's not a very good score right now. But they're going to come back. So we got to watch the Braves and um, cheer them on. Unless you like Houston, then you can cheer them on. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Pam and Kathy. And wow, a lot of people here, Cherie and Mary. It's nice to see you. I have several new people that have asked about how we cut our die cuts and stuff. And of course, you know, we all take it for granted that you know what we're talking about when we do die cuts. And that's probably not the best way to teach you. So we're going to look at the scan and cut machine just for a little bit. We're not going to do everything that it does. We might do that again another day. But we're going to look at the um, things that it can do for you, the simpler things. And so this is on page 152 in the catalog. And we have a regular size scan and cut. And then we have our cut and emboss. I don't know why I'm saying scan and cut. Cut and emboss. And then we have a mini. We're not going to look at the mini tonight because... If you need a cut and emboss machine, you need the big one. The mini is nice to have for extra or if you're um, going to a crop or a, a retreat, you might take the mini one with you. But the mini will not um, work for every die that we have or every embossing folder. So that's the difference. <clears throat> so we want to look at just the large one. And it is $120. But for that $120, you get the plates and the platform, everything you need to start using it. And then you, you have to replace them um, over time. But they're fairly inexpensive to replace. So let's look at um, how this works. I'm telling you, you need one. I couldn't live without mine, I don't think. So the great thing about our cut and emboss machine is it travels well, and it also doesn't take up a lot of room in your craft room because it folds, it can fold up. Do you see? I don't know if you can see. You can blow. <laughs> wipe all the dust off of here so it folds up and you can carry it around by the handle but we're going to turn it this way because I can't um, use it the other direction and then the platforms pop out so this is where you're going to put your plates so when you get the scan and cut the handle will not be attached here, um, but you, it will come with a little tool and you will screw that on, put a little plug in there, and then your handle will be on there. It does tend to get loose after a while, but you're going to put that little tool, it's an Allen wrench, in a very safe place and that way you can tighten it up as you need to. This is what I do with my Allen wrench. Um, let's see if I see it right here. 
is I tape it to the inside of my drawer. with a piece of washi tape. And then when I need it, I can get it right out of the drawer. It's just the easy, I've lost these so many times. So I just keep it in my pencil drawer and I know where it, where it is. It's a different size Allen wrench than most of the kits that um, sets that you get at Home Depot. So you want to keep up with that. So once you get the handle put on and flip the sides down, then you will also get these platforms. And you'll all, always use platform one. And it has the directions on there. So that's kind of helpful for you. And it's in several different languages, but we'll just use English for ours. So we'll put the platform in. Then we have platform two, and this is for stacking our plates. And you will use this most of the time, but not all of the time. And then you have plate three and plate three. You have two of these. Now I pulled out some that are not very, haven't been used much. I was going to show you the ones. Uh, the, this is what will, they'll look like after you've used it and used it and used it. And after a while, you'll want to throw that away and get a new plate. But I use, I keep the one on the bottom is the worst looking one. And so then my top one doesn't have very many uh, indents or scratches. So this will now become my bottom plate. So when you order the plates and you get two, then you'll let this one, the nice clean one, be your top plate. And that way you'll just constantly rotate your plates so that you don't have worn out plates. The reason you'll want to, one reason you'll want to get rid of this kind of plate is it will show some of those scratches, especially on, if you're uh, doing a foil, those scratches will show on your foil and you don't want that to, to happen. So you'll want to have a nice clean plate, especially when you're using foils. So we'll put this pitiful one to the side. We won't use it tonight. How's that? Then you have plate number four. And this is for embossing folders. It very clearly says this is not a cutting surface. So be careful when you are using this or sharing it with your friends that they pay attention to what these say. So you don't use this for cutting. So let's do just a couple samples of how we want to um, use our machine. And I think the first one we'll do is an embossing folder. Let's see where I put them here. I have all my little plates I want to use. Oh, here, they're right here in front of me. We're going to use this one first. It's called Pretty Flowers. And I have a piece of soft succulent. I believe that's what this is. And we're going to emboss this. Now, Pretty Flowers is a regular embossing folder. Now there's a difference, so um, you'll see. So when it's a regular thin embossing folder, you will leave plate 
platform too because you'll want that base. But then you will only use one plate, I hope this is right, to emboss. And we'll make our little sandwich and run that through. Ooh, maybe I need the extra plate. That's, maybe I need number four. We'll see if that's it. And I do like to slide that in that way. Yeah, it's number four. So one, two, and four. If you have a different kind of machine, and there's a gazillion of them out there, you just have to play with the sandwiches that work the best for you. I only have this one, so I don't know what <laughs> what to tell you. But isn't that pretty? It's pretty on both sides. This is debossed and embossed. Now let's see what happens when we have a 3D folder. Do you see? It's much thicker. And it doesn't bend much. This one, if you can bend it like this, you know it's not 3D. But this is a 3D folder, so it will give a much um, deeper indention embossing on here. So let's run a piece of this through here. This one is called Time Warm time worn type we're going to take number two away this time if you're left-handed right-handed it make you know you always put this in the machine with the fold going in if you put it the other way and run it through the machine it can pop and crack this fold so you don't want to ruin your embossing folder and we'll slide that in run that through i think embossing folders are one of my favorite products because there's so many other things you can do with them besides and it makes your paper look so pretty instead of boring flat paper so now we have time worn type and it's a much deeper indention and So we have regular embossing folders and 3D embossing folders. We also have mini embossing folders and they will work just fine in here. But these will not work in the mini machine. So that's why if you want to have all the embossing folders that we have work, you will want to have the larger machine. Let's see if I can move this a little bit closer. I'm going to put number two back on my platform. I'm going to put my slightly scratched number three. And we'll do some die cutting. Let's see what we can do. So, yesterday, was it yesterday? Monday. <laughs> I did die cutting with the stamping and then I die, I stamped the leaves and then I die cut them. Well, today we're just going to use this die cut. This is from the Artistically Inked Bundle. And I chose it because it's a detailed die cut. And I wanted to show you how those worked. And how to make them work for you. So you're going to lay your paper on your platform, your die cut here, and then you will put your number three plate 
Now, if it's something you stamped, I usually will use the washi, either the um, post-it note tape or washi tape to hold it in place. But since we're just doing white, it doesn't matter here. We're not worrying about it sliding. And when it's a detailed die cut, I will usually run it through front to back. Don't worry about the Braves game. You know, they're losing right now, Karen. So if we ignore them, maybe they'll start hitting those balls better. <laughs> they sure did a good job last night, though, didn't they? So now we've got our die cut. And... We could use that scraps for something maybe, but I think it'll go right in the recycle. We have this uh, brush tool that fits on the end of your take a pick tool. And when you order it, you get the little brush and a sponge. And you can run that over there, your die cut, and it will get almost all of those pieces pop them right out and you don't have to worry about poking each one and if there's a few that don't get caught by the brush we have this little tool let's clean that off so we can see better I can run that through again. Now, if I, I'm not going to glue this down on a card. I want it to be hmm, kind of 3D looking. But if I was going to adhere this to my card front and I wanted it very, very flat, I would use the adhesive sheet before. Or I die cut it. This one didn't seem to want to pop out very good. And you'll see when we make our little card. We're going to make a quick card here. There we go. I think we've got a few little things right here in the center and they've got just a few to poke out so now we're ready to use the pieces so this is how you do a detailed die cut now if you had you like I said if you wanted to use the adhesive sheet you would put that on the back of the paper before you die cut it and then it will pop right it'll Peel right off, and you can stick it on your card. This one, sometimes I will leave my uh, chads randomly not poked out. It depends on the card and what kind of look. Or I call these chads. I don't. That's from the Florida election, isn't it? We won't. All right, now we can also use it with our labels. So we're gonna, um, we are gonna do a little stamping. So this is one of the Hippo Happiness labels. I don't think that'll fit on here. I need a bigger piece of paper. So let me get a bigger piece of white paper. I thought my scrap was big enough. Let's see. We'll put this machine to the side for just a bit so we can do a little bit of stamping. We're going to make this into a birthday card. So I'm going to use best wishes. That could be birthday, wedding, new job. 
whatever. And we're going to use Blackberry Bliss. I have to stamp that on here. And we'll put that right there. And now we'll lay our die cut on there. That looks kind of big. I think I want my die smaller. Let me look and see which one. I just had Hippo Happiness out here. Really didn't think about um, looking for something smaller. Kind of wondering. Yeah. Let's see. can find one, I'm sure. My goodness, there's too many to pick from. Let's see if this will... I think that one will work. I don't want to cut the... Yeah, that'll work. So we'll do this one. That'll be fine. So look here are the ridges of our die cut. These will not cut you. Um, they won't, they're not razor sharp. If you remember the old Sizzix dies that we had what, 15 years ago, that were the foam, and then they had that razor blade embedded in them. That would cut your fingers terribly. And these will not. So that's a good thing about the change of improved products. So if you have little children, these will not hurt your children's fingers. You don't have to worry about them cutting themselves with a razor, razor edge. Yeah, there's our best wishes. We'll put those to the side. Now I wanted to show you what happens when you die cut vellum because we're going to put some green leaves on our card so we're going to lay our vellum on here and this is shimmer vellum so we want the shimmer side up we'll lay that on our platform and this is a die from the artistically inked dies and we're going to cut some leaves Now, I know that $120 is a big investment, but it's well worth it. But did you know you can get this in a starter kit? Because the starter kit is $125 worth of products for $99. So you would get a cut and emboss machine, and then you'd have to find something for $5, like a bottle of glue or just some ribbon or some rhinestones and then after that everything you purchase would be 20 percent off so because you would be purchasing from yourself so that's one way to get a cut and emboss machine you have lots of paper trash when you use this or you can host a party, workshop, party, and invite your friends to shop, and you be the hostess, and then you would could get this with hostess benefits. So lots of ways to get this without investing the $120 yourself.
So we'll put this to the side now. And we'll put our card together. So, I guess I need a card base. Here we go. So we have a regular card base. We're going to use the pieces we embossed just because they're here and we will hardly notice that that Blackberry Bliss is embossed. We, we have to make a card. I mean, that's part of the rules of doing a Facebook Live is you have to do a project too. But I did want you to see all the different ways you can use the cut and emboss machine. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Because there's so many ways you can do it with ink. You can turn you can turn these die cuts into embossing cuts. They won't cut the paper, but you'll have this pretty design. So we just need to have some lessons, don't we? On how to do all of that. I need to do better about pulling it out so you can see it when I am using it. But it's so easy for it to be on my table and I'm lazy. So there you go. We'll get that adhered on here. Now we're just going to put this pretty little die cut right there. And since we don't, I don't want it um, totally, I want to let it be flappy. I'm only going to glue it here in the center. And that will hold that down. I think we're going to need some rhinestones too. So we'll get those ready. And we've got our pretty leaves here from our shimmer. And see, so these just popped right out. I didn't need to use the brush on them at all. I don't see a pair of scissors anywhere. Wonder where they might be. I've been making a ton of cards today, so everything's out of whack. We're just going to cut these off. See, I think I'll cut that off and layer these little leaves here. And we'll let those be just lightly adhered. It's a pretty color that's evening evergreen shimmer. I love this shimmer vellum because it puts the sparkle on there. You don't have to do it with Wink of Stella. I have Blackberry Bliss uh, Sheer Ribbon and we're just going to make a flop, not a bow, just a some kind of ribbon we're going to stick on here. Um, and let's see, I've got some glue dots from a paper pumpkin, and they're pretty big, so they'll work just fine. Hmm. I want to kind of make a fussy. Floppy bow here. 
It doesn't have to be a bow. So we'll put our glue dot. Sorry, let me move up here. I don't know why I'm keep coming closer to myself tonight. And we'll put another one here. And then we'll put that right about there. And then our sentiment's going to hold it down, so... Nobody will know that those blue dots are behind it. Let's cut that in a pretty angle. Looks like we need another green here. Another green leaf. And we'll put this on with some dimensionals and we'll be done. And like I have two little scraps left here. Never let that go to waste. Then I'll hold that down nicely. I don't know if we need bling on here or not. It's kind of pretty the way it is. But I think we can put some on here. No problem. I know we'll put these down. Whoop. Not flying here. Put that on. Little bitty one. Name my other. One up there. Okay, there's our card. So we did regular embossing folder, 3D embossing folder, die cuts, lacy die cuts, and then labels. All for not on one card. Came out pretty, didn't it? And the colors, I like the green and the blackberry bliss together. So if you have any questions about the cut and emboss machine, all you have to do is let me know and I'll be glad to talk to you about it. I do need to let you know Friday I have a Christmas class. We're going to make four cards. Um, you can follow along with me and just watch how we do it, how I do it. If you, um, there'll be an ordering special, and if you want to place an order, then you'll get the card, you'll get four cards to make of your own. I'll mail them to you. So that'll be all on there on Friday, so you'll know about that. And then next week, you need to make sure and read my newsletter, because there's several fun things happening from Stamping Up, but we can't share them until next week. So um, that'll be on Tuesday evening, I guess, somewhere around there. But all day Tuesday, uh, the Crazy Crafters are going to share Eden, garden, Eden's Garden with you. So make sure you're a member of Crazy Crafters. 
so that you can see it's a new stamp set that will be available to order on starting Tuesday. And to me, the stamp set's pretty. The paper is fabulous. So if you don't order anything else, you'll want that paper. So uh, make sure you're ready on Tuesday. We'll have four or five different people sharing that new stamp set during the day. So lots going on. I'm glad and we'll keep you busy for the next couple days. So thanks for joining me tonight. And I will see you tomorrow morning if you're a papa. And otherwise, I will see you next Monday for lunch. No, I'll see you Friday for Christmas. Talk to you later. Bye.